This video is about hypothesis testing. Here we've got a situation where a candidate for an election believes she's got 40% of people saying they're going to vote for her. And someone's going to test at the 5% significance level whether that is an overestimate of her support. So they ask 20 people whether they support the candidate or not and three people say they do. So three things to answer. Firstly, a suitable test statistic. Well, the test statistic is the number of people who say they would support the candidate. Now we need two suitable hypotheses. Now this question is an example of a one-tailed test. The reason it's a one-tailed test is because the researcher is going to test to see whether they're overestimating the support. Now, a two-tailed test would, would be used if this question said a researcher wants to test at the 5% significance level whether the candidate is correct or not. If the candidate is correct or not, it may be that uh, the actual number of people that are voting for her is more than 40% or less than 40%. But what we're looking at here is to see whether it's just less than 40%. We want to see whether the candidate is overestimating her support. So it looks like 3 out of 20, which is 15%, it looks like the number is an underestimate. So that's why it's a one-tailed test. And you can tell that from the wording of the question. And it's important that we get this right. So if the candidate is overestimating the support, it's a one-tailed test. If the question said whether the, whether the candidate is wrong about it being 40%, that would be a two-tailed test. It could be more than 40%, it could be less than 40%. So, we're going to write down two suitable hypotheses. One is called the null hypothesis, and H0 is used for that. And the alternative hypothesis is called H1. So H0 is the boring, um, stay as you are, nothing's really changed hypothesis. So that's that the probability that people are going to vote for this candidate is 0.4, that's 40%. And the alternative hypothesis is a bit more interesting. Maybe it's actually uh, less than 0.4. So the null hypothesis is always where it's equal to something, staying as it is. That assumption is correct. So the null hypothesis has always got an equal sign. The alternative hypothesis uh, is could be less than, could be greater than, and in a two-tailed test, it would simply be not equal to. So in a one-tailed test, it's going to be less than, in some situations it could be greater than. But in a two-tailed test, where we're looking to see whether this is just not true, you may have P not equal to 0.4. But in this situation, it's a one-tailed test, so these are the suitable hypotheses. So part C... The answer to part C is this. The null hypothesis will be rejected if the probability of three or fewer people saying they support the candidate is less than 5%. So let's explain this. What we're, what we're going to do in these situations is test the null hypothesis. Assume the null hypothesis is true. Assume that it is for 40% that are going to vote for this candidate and find the probability of getting this result. So the result we've got is 3 out of 20. How likely is it? It is, of course, possible that even with 40% of the residents saying they're going to vote for the candidate, it could still be true that 3 out of 20 get that. It seems a bit unlikely, but how unlikely is that? If it's less than 5%, then we can reject the null hypothesis. If it's more than 5%, then we can accept the null hypothesis. So 3 out of 20, that, that's a small number. It's much smaller than what you'd expect. 40% of 20 is 8, and we've got 3. So it seems unlikely, but it is clearly still possible. The point at which we reject the null hypothesis is if the probability of getting this result is less than 5%. Now sometimes the significance level is 1% or 10%. But here it's 5%. So this is the answer to the question. But let's go a little bit further. 
let's find out the probability of actually getting 3 out of 20 when we've got 40% of the residents of the whole population saying they'll vote for the candidate. So we've finished the question as it's written, but we're just going to do a little bit more now. So let's take this a bit further and find out what the researcher, what conclusion the researcher would come to. So I've written out the null hypothesis again, written out the alternative hypothesis, emphasise it's a one-tailed test. Our test statistic is the number of people supporting the candidate. Now either people support the candidate or they don't. So X belongs to a binomial distribution where there's 20 events because the researcher asked 20 people. And the probability of success each time is 0.4. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the probability that the number of people supporting the candidate is less than or equal to 3, given the fact that uh, it's 40% of the people that say they are going to vote for this candidate. So with 40%, how likely is it that we'll get 3 or even smaller than 3? We know it's smaller than 3, not greater than 3 here, because 3 is smaller than the expected value. 40% of 20 is 8 so what's the probability of getting 3 or even smaller than 3? So using my Casio FX991 calculator, I go to the menu item, I choose number 7, that's distributions. I scroll down to get binomial cumulative distribution. It's on the second screen and number 1. Press 2 for variable and I enter uh, x to be 3. Hang on a minute, here we go, x to be 3 n is 20 and the probability is obviously 0 0.4 so what's the probability of getting uh, less than or equal to 3 it's 0 0.01596 so that's 0 0.01596 now that is less than 5% so 5% is the significance level that we've been given and 5% or less is determined to be a very unusual probability. So because of that I can reject the null hypothesis and to say that there is evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. In other words <clears throat> there is evidence to su suggest that fewer than 40% of people support the candidate. We haven't proved that 40% support the candidate, but there is evidence to, su to support that, to suggest that maybe it is fewer than 40%. So the conclusion should not say, therefore we know definitely that 40%, it's just the probabilities are suggesting that.